Our next storyteller is the creator and host of the wildly popular uh, live storytelling show and podcast called Risk. You may recognize him from MTV's The State. He's also been on Reno 911 and Flight of the Concords. And I think you are going to have a wonderful, wonderful time hearing his story. Please give it up for Kevin Allison. Uh, I went to an all boys high school, uh, which worked out great for me because I like boys. <laughs> People often, you know, you hear sometimes straight men especially will be like, what the hell, what, what are you guys looking at when you're in the, you know, locker rooms with us? And the answer is your butts, okay? We are looking at your butts. So I was very happy, and here's the thing. This was the early 80s when I was in high school. This was around uh, 1984 or so, and it was I, I went to an all-Catholic school, and, and it was in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is a very conservative town, and so it was rather radical of me at that age to actually start coming out of the closet to some of my friends there at school, some of my closest friends. I started very gradually letting them know that I was gay, and I was really touched and thrilled and excited, and it was a great relief to find that they were still accepting. So that was wonderful. Now, my very best friend in high school, his name was Ben. And if there's another thing I really was into back then, it was pranks. It was kind of pulling one over on someone, practical jokes. And my friend Ben, I especially liked to kind of scare him with gay stuff, you know? <laughs> I knew that ultimately he was okay with it, but every now and then I'd flash him a, you know, nudie picture or something like that and be like, boo, remember I'm gay. Uh, <laughs> so another thing you should know about my high school is that we had this kind of special thing. We had an inter-home room mail system. So if you ever wanted to get a message to a teacher or someone in another classroom, they would pass around a basket in the first, in the first uh, session of the day at about 8.30 in the morning, and you'd put a note in the basket, and then a student would pick it up and take these various notes to the various homerooms that they had to be taken to. So that was kind of cool. And one day, I was at home, and for some reason, I don't know why, but I had a condom. I was in my bedroom, and I was looking at this condom, and I had no use for a condom at the age of 16, because, you know, I, I, was, I was a very good boy back then, and none of that kind of thing was going on. And I was thinking, gosh, what could I do with this thing? And then I thought, oh my gosh. I know a perfect practical joke. I know the ultimate kind of boo, scary, gay kind of stuff I can do to Ben. I thought, what if I were to take this condom, jerk off into it, <laughs> put it in an envelope, Write to Ben on the envelope, put it in my book bag, take it to school the next morning, and drop it in the inter-homeroom mail system. <laughs> now we've arrived at the part of the story where I think back and think, what the fuck? <laughs> at the time, I thought that I was really pushing the envelope, <laughs> literally, that this was kind of an advanced humor that Maybe even Tom Sawyer would appreciate <laughs> if there had been prophylactics in his day. <laughs> so I went through with my plan, I did that, I put it in the envelope, I took it to school the next day and dropped it in the inter-homeroom mail system. And then I kind of forgot about it. I went to my first class. And my first class was called Moral Choices. <laughs> like I said, it was a Catholic school, and this class was all about how sometimes you might do things in your life that other people might not appreciate all that much. <laughs> I thought this class was really fascinating. But then midway through class, a teacher walked in and handed a note to the teacher of the Moral Choices class. And at that same time, my friend Paul was handing me a note from across the seats in the room. And I opened up the note and it said, Kevin, 
Kevin, I was with Ben in homeroom this morning, and I know what that note that our teacher is getting is about. Ben ratted you out. And I'm not sure if it was revenge, I'm not sure if he was just getting back at you, or if it was just a knee-jerk reaction to a horrible thing you did. <laughs> because what Ben did is he opened up the envelope, he dropped the envelope, and he just shouted out, Ugh, Allison! <laughs> so there wasn't much guessing as to who it might be that sent that message. So the teacher calls me up and he says, Mr. Allison, you have to go see the vice principal in charge of discipline. And now it's kind of settling into me as the blood starts to erase from my face. I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute. I've done something that's typical of the kind of thing for which a student might get expelled. I've done something really fucked up. <laughs> I have no explanation for why I did it. I did something fucked up, and it was just for the sake of doing something fucked up, and now I'm terrified about looking an authority figure in the face and having him tell me, you fucked up. <laughs> so I'm kind of walking down the hallway now, and I'm on pins and needles, and I just feel like I'm shaking. Now, Mr. Mayor was the vice principal in charge of discipline. And this guy was, I mean, he was no funny business. He was a little guy who had kind of a Napoleon plot, uh, complex, you know? Bald, it kind of reminded me a little bit of George C. Scott. And he was the, uh, the coach of our baseball team. But he was always on the PA system in the mornings yelling at all 1,300 boys in our school about some disciplinary thing. And it was always in terms, in baseball terms. He was always saying, are you on my team or are you not on my team? You wanna play hardball with me? Oh, you do not wanna play hardball with me. He loved the word hardball. <laughs> but me, I was so scared of this guy. I had never said a word to him. All, you know, all, the only conversations we'd ever had in the past is we'd pass in the hallway and he'd go, Allison. And so that was it. But now we were about to have a very intimate conversation. <laughs> So I walk into his office and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Kevin, look, you're very popular in our high school musicals. Use that acting skill now, right? Really turn on the I did not do whatever you're about to talk about role. But I couldn't do it. As I was walking through, I just felt that I was shaking. I felt like it was showing in my eyes. I felt like my face was too pale to hide it. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and then I noticed he looked a little shaken, too. <laughs> he looked a little disturbed. And I sat down in the chair opposite him, and he just pushes this envelope toward me. He said, Allison, did you? do this and I take the envelope and I open it up and I go no I don't even know what this is <laughs> and I put it down and he just stared at me for a while looking a little disappointed a little unsure of what to do until finally he just took the envelope and dropped it in the wastebasket and said okay then out of my chair and I walked out of there and I thought, what just happened? Surely he knew I was guilty because my acting was not up to snuff there. That was nothing compared to how I had been in Godspell. <laughs> but I was thankful I seemed to have gotten away with it. Well, about four years later, I was in college at NYU and I went home one summer and the director of our musical theater company in high school, she was also an English teacher there, she invited me out for lunch. We went out for lunch and she said, oh, you know, the most tragic thing happened. Mr. Mayor passed away. I said, oh my God, that's terrible. She said, yeah, yeah, it really was. But you know, there's more. He was in the closet all those years. And I said, 
What? Mr. Man? I would have never, you know, he was just such a macho guy and I, it just didn't compute for me at that time. And she said, yeah, but there's more. <laughs> he was also just such a huge admirer of your performance in our production of Godspell. <laughs> He thought you were absolutely fabulous. I said, what? <laughs> All right. And she said, yeah, but there's more. <laughs> she said, he heard through the grapevine that you had started coming out to other guys at school, to some of the other boys. And he was so impressed by your character for that because in all these years, we on the faculty had never heard of a boy who had actually started coming out of the closet. People have been waiting for that to start happening here at school. And when he heard that you had, he just thought, oh wow, I am really impressed with that kid. So now all of a sudden, I had this realization. Mr. Mayor most certainly knew that I was guilty of that ridiculous condom prank. But we were on the same team! <laughs> so we took one for the team. <laughs> Thank you. Comes the world.